have already signaled an even higher ambition to sell solar electricity to others. I hope that in the sessions here in Abu Dhabi, there will be a great deal of ambition and far more action on this. I learned from Wangari Maathai, my dear deceased friend, and she said, as many of you have heard, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We need to go far quickly, and that's why this ascent here in Abu Dhabi uh, is so crucial. So in closing, I started with two questions. Do we have to do it? Yes. Can we do it? Yes. I'd like to close with two other questions, one of which will be asked by the next generation not too long from now. If they live in a world with worse floods, deeper droughts, collapsing uh, governance in countries that are damaged by this, with hundreds of millions of climate refugees and diseases spreading into new niches and sea level rises, they would be justified in looking back at us and asking, what were you thinking? Why didn't you act? But if they live in a world with hope and optimism, a world of renewable, uh, 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 of hope with renewable energy, renewed governance structures, with reforms, if they see solar and wind and efficiency, and if they look at their own children and feel in their hearts that their lives are going to be better still, I want them to look back at us and ask, how did you find the moral courage to rise and confront this crisis? And part of the answer will be the ascent in Abu Dhabi and the special session this September and the Paris negotiation in 2015. Always remember, political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you. If you had to give advice to one government about one thing they should do that will be the most meaningful thing to climate change, what, what, will, you, what will you ask them to do? If you could take them to do one thing, what would that be? Put a price on carbon in markets and put a price on denial in politics. <laughs> Putting a price on denial in politics is not very easy as you, as I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's correct anymore. Uh, I, I believe that the answer to that first question I posed at the beginning, do we have to do this? is increasingly yes, because the average citizen in all of our countries has begun to feel viscerally that these extreme weather events are a signal from Mother Nature, that the planet has a fever. All is not well. We have to stop using the atmosphere as an open sewer. It's simple common sense. It took a long time for the world to realize that slavery was morally unacceptable. It took a long time before the world realized that of course women should have the ability to participate uh, in politics and in governance and we could go through other social revolutions as well. But here's what they all have in common. Whenever any question is ultimately resolved into a simple choice between what is right and what is wrong, the outcome is foreordained because of who we are as human beings. What is changing now is that people are now seeing this as a choice between what is clearly right and what is clearly wrong. We are going to do the right thing. We have seen those images which are in many ways fairly apocalyptic, some of the ones you showed. Do you have any hard reasons for hope. Oh, absolutely. Uh, business in many ways is ahead of governments. I see my friend Paul Pullman here who will be speaking later. He will, be, later, he will make this case better than I can. Uh, the investor community is ahead of government. You know, they got burned on subprime mortgages. They don't want to get burned on subprime carbon uh, assets. They're awake to the risks that we have ignored. And we're seeing local and regional governments, even in, in my country, though the national government has been slow to act, it is now acting, but California and several other states are moving. And the same is true around the world. So yes, we are going to prevail. We are going to win this. 
Again, the only question is how long will it take? And I'll clo close with this. In the civil rights revolution in my country, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was once asked in a time of pessimism about civil rights, how long is it going to take? And he said, how long? Not long. The arc of just, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. How long? Not long. How long will this take? Not long. We're going to win. Ladies and gentlemen, Sal Gold.